Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again today. We're back out in the garden. I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on the pond and some of the new things that we've added. I have specifically filmed this um, after the solar panel, which you can just see in the corner over there, has been out of the light for a while. So we're kind of early, late, late afternoon, early evening. You can see the filter still going. So this is the filter we talked about the first time. Absolutely love this thing. Couldn't recommend it enough. But there's some other additions that we've made to the pond as well. So we've planted up the back of it, finished off the coping stones, and this is pretty much the finished pond. But the most exciting addition they've got with the new pond, obviously, is the fish. We've got some fish in here. Not that I can see any of them, but we'll come on to that. We've added some plain old goldfish, some common old garden pond goldfish. I think that's specifically how they were listed in the shop, was pond goldfish. Um, so we bought six of them added them into the pond a week ago now, maybe a week and a half ago. And as far as I can tell, they've been doing absolutely fine, but I can't see them at the moment. And that's kind of what we want to address today. So you might notice that the pond has this lovely kind of pea soup color that's going on here. Um, my original idea was the plants up at that end would block out some of the light because the sun comes from this direction, but clearly not blocking out quite enough of it. I've added in some plants as well, so we've got a few plants under the water, oxygenating plants uh, and some water lettuce as well, so we've got these, a couple of these, it's really the wrong time of the year to be buying plants for your pond, so I've been struggling as to what I can actually get in um, most of the garden centres and places like that, it's, it's very slim pickings, it's like going to the nightclub at quarter to three in the morning, yeah, it's, it's not what you want to be taking home. but. We've got these, hopefully the idea is that in time these will get bigger and start sucking up some of the nutrients from the pond, uh, creating less green water. These, by the way, um, water lettuce, you often see these advertised for as aquarium plants, there's dwarf water lettuce. There's no such thing as dwarf water lettuce, it's just this that's young. Um, but I wanted to get some floating plants, I added some duckweed. Obviously with goldfish, the duckweed um, is all gone because they ate it all. So I needed a plan of attack and I was previously thinking about keeping smaller fish like maybe some minnows or something like that. Goldfish are quite a big messy fish so I wasn't really happy with this as the filtration so I wanted to talk a little bit about the filtration and what we can do to both filter the water to keep it safe for the fish and make it look a bit nicer so it's not quite so green and so I can actually see the fish which would be nice. So, as I say, with goldfish being a bit bigger and having that slightly higher bio load than smaller fish might have, I was a bit worried that this filter might not cut it. So this filter, just as a bit of a reminder, is basically this container. So it's like a makeshift canister filter, if you like. Holes in the top, drags in the water, under some, through some sponge, through some biological media, through some more sponge, and then back out. Oh, wee fishy. Um, it's solar power, so it fits the bill in terms of energy efficiency, if you like. There's no power out here, so this is a solar power pump with a battery. But the battery maybe runs like an hour after dusk. Keeps it going through the day, and that's fine, but there's no filtration on it at night. So I wanted a solution that would both add to the biological capacity of that little filter, as well as something that would run a bit longer. So that mm -hmm. led me on to this thing. which is a similar idea here. You can see it's a sponge at both ends, biological media in the middle and a small pump, which outputs through this bit here. And that is run to, or run by, a small power bank like this, which just sits hidden under here. It's a 20,000 milliamp hour power bank. Nothing particularly special about it. I did have a bit of a plan to make this too run off a um, solar panel, so I do have another solar panel. So the idea was to have this solar panel charging the power bank, keeping it going uh, throughout the day. But unfortunately it's not a power bank that has pass-through charging as one of its features. What it means is, while it's charging, it can't also be running the thing that it's meant to be doing, so it can't take in power as well as put out power. And Despite lots of searching, there are very few power banks that have passed through charging, so I've kind of given up on that as a feature. What that means for this application is what I might end up doing is, if I go on holiday or something like that, I'll just keep it plugged in so that it can be charging through the day, so it won't be running that filter, but this filter will be running during the day. 
that filter will just be charging the battery during the day and then during the night this filter will kick in which will keep some filtration going 24 hours a day. This thing uh, in testing so far will run for maybe four and a half, five days um, just running 24 seven, which is pretty good I think. Whereas if I plug this in, I might get that up to kind of eight, nine, ten days. It doesn't charge at a great rate unless it's really, really, really sunny. So that's fine. That's going to deal with the biological filtration for the fish. But it, what it won't deal with is the green pea soup colour. Now, if the pond matures, hopefully, and I get more plants established, that won't be quite such a, a chore. But right now, I can't see the fish and I want to be able to see the fish. So we're going to have to get some kind of UV filter on this. Good thing about the power bank, if I wanted to add more filtration, I've got extra slots here where I could add like a USB air pump like this kind of thing, which we've seen over and over again, and just add a traditional air pump to it. Perfectly suitable for this size tank uh, slash pond, that would work quite well. Um, if I thought I was getting too overstocked or maybe I didn't think I was getting enough filtration going through, that's certainly an option that I could just add to one of these and it wouldn't do too much damage to how long I could run it. So one of my jobs for today is to upgrade the filter that's down here with a new USB pump, which is higher capacity. I think it's something like 200, 300 litres an hour, but lower watts, so that should increase the runtime for it. So as you can see, that's not too bad in terms of throughput, especially in a small thing like this. Change this one over, basically take out the old one, so for comparison, that's the old one, <laughs> a little bit pathetic in comparison. So that more power, that was just one that I had lying around, more power, less capacity. Uh, it's just a case of putting your hand in here, regularly it around until I can fit it onto this little pipe which I've fitted. This is just a bit of drainage pipe, I think. 100 mil pipe. So jam that on there. So that's that back together. Biological filtration in the side. Cap it off with a bit of sponge. Same on the other side. Cap it off with a bit of missing sponge. Where's it gone? And we're away. Another top temp if you temp top tip if you do go the power bank route is get a power bank with a display on it so you can check it each day and see how many percent you have left. So to battle the sludge, we've got this. Let's get it opened up. Completely not sponsored. Paid for this with my own money. This is the All Pond Solutions All-in-One Small Pond System 9 Watt UV Clarification Filter. 1000 litres per hour, up to 2000 litre ponds. It's also a bit of a, an all-in-one, so it's a proper filter as well as just having a, a UV. So there's lots of options on there. This was the first one that seemed to be a step up from the little tiny ones that were for aquariums. This the first one that was rated for a pond as such. I've never really been a fan of UV or never really been a believer of UV that the UV bulbs were strong enough to do anything. So this will be a true test. You can see how murky this is. Come back in the next video and see how murky it is, but this is something we'll get it in, give it a chance. You can tell it's a pond pump because they haven't put a plug on it. At it's very basic, it's just a big internal filter. So there's some kind of bio gravel in the bottom there. A sponge intake sponge all around it and then in here is the uv bulb with like a a window so you can see whether or not it's working it comes with so if that goes back in there like so this is the output so you can put a fountain or whatever you want on top of that 
comes with various parts for that. I don't really want to do anything fancy at all. Spare impeller or actual impeller? Oh, spare impeller, that's a good sign. Uh, variable flow, etc, etc. And then there's your fountain attachments for your various attachments to go on here. Pretty good. Uh, not a bad price, can't remember the price off the top of my head, so I'll put it here somewhere. But yeah, we'll get this in and running, see how it gets on. I suspect it's going to take at least a week before it actually does anything. So, here's the new pond filter here. To be honest, I only see this as a temporary thing. Uh, once the pond matures, I'm hoping it will kind of be a bit more self-sustaining, self but let's switch it on and see what happens. Big. No, stop. Get off. Right, so I'm going to have to play around with the directionality. <laughs> Otherwise, my pond will be empty shortly. Never do this. Never run a pump, pump track. That snapping noise was not good. set on its lowest setting. Still too big for this obviously. Let's take that off altogether. So it comes with lots of attachments but they all fit onto the end of this main attachment here. Which can be made bigger, smaller, whatever you want it to do. There's even some ones with valves, so you can send the flow in different directions. But I've already broken it. So this is the main piece that sits on here. I don't know if you can see that, but it didn't survive first contact with the enemy. And now everything, no matter how much I tighten it down, that leaves a little gap and most of the water comes out of here rather than going up there. For my purposes, it's kind of fine. I just want the water to pass through the UV, it will do that. But it's not a great indictment. I don't know if I can be bothered to send it back because I have had all pond solution stuff in the past. It's been a bit of a chore to send back. Um, but you know, anyone's watching from all pond solutions, get in touch. I wasn't overly manhandling it or anything, but that was a little bit probably easy to fix. Bit of super glue, something like that, fine, but still. Using it less than a minute and it breaks. So that's the Alpon solution, CUP129, a bit of a disappointing experience, but it should still do the trick. Um, I have seen the fish floating around in here, so if you spend enough time out here, you do see them eventually. I'll try and give them a little bit of feed, a bit of flake, see if you can see any flashes of them. I can see them under that bit of water lettuce, probably eating it to pieces. And I'll leave you with a few shots of the fish. If you want to see how things go, I will do an update video in maybe about a week or so, see if it clears up a little bit. Um, as always, Friday nights, 9pm, join me for a live stream. You can join in there, ask me any questions. But yes, thank you for joining me and we'll see you in the next one.